joy in the city joy in your life joy in your family and joy everywhere in jesus name gck authority has announced the next level move from the land of honor and integrity comes two in one gck live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria, the Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Professionals, titled Recharge to Excel, December 27, 2022, at 0600 hours GMT, all broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms, with Jonathan White, our guest music minister, GCK, the gospel to every creature. And never to see ourselves above your word, but rather we'll put ourselves under your word, so that the blessing of obedience and faith can be ours in Jesus' name. Tonight, I pray, Lord, that by the anointing of, uh, upon you, uh, upon the word of God, you will give clarity to your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. We can be seated. If you look at your program, we're having our bible teaching and the topic we are considering is clear conscience and reality of the new life clear conscience and reality of the new life let's open our bible to acts of apostles chapter 24 verse 16 acts chapter 24 verse 16 and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. This statement was made by Paul the Apostle, wherein he was declaring his stand as a Christian and as an apostle, saying, Every time I make sure that I do not allow anything that will make my conscience either to be defiled or anything that can trouble me but i make sure i maintain a good conscience without offense to god and offense to fellow men in romans chapter 6 romans chapter 6 verse 4 romans chapter 6 verse 4 therefore we are buried within by baptism and into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. The two passages I read, the first one talks concerning conscience, having a clear conscience, void of offense toward, uh, toward God and men. And then the next one I read, tells us about how we ought to live in the newness of life. In the topic under consideration, we can see the word conscience there, very, very important. And then we can see the new life, also very important. In fact, the two go together. If a man say, I am born again, I have a new life in Christ, he must at the same time have a conscience that is clear, without any guilt. The word conscience, as we see it in this uh, topic of our consideration, refers to a person's awareness of right and wrong with regard to his or her own thoughts and actions. That is, whatever we do, we have a conscience that either exonerates us or condemns us. A conscience that either justify what we have done or at the same time put a kind of guilt within us and then it makes us to be able to call to become a kind of a concern because when your conscience is worrying you and it appears each time you are reminded of a particular act or a particular deed you are somehow uh, put off balance that shows that you are under guilt you have a guilty conscience. 
one can either have a, a clear conscience or a good conscience or a guilty conscience. There is no middle ground. What is conscience? If I may give you a dictionary definition. From the Webster's uh, Dictionary, the word conscience is defined as the knowledge of our acts, states, or character as to right or wrong, the faculty, power, or principle which decides on the lawfulness of our actions and affections and approves or condemns them. That is, whatever we do, God has put in man something to either condemn you if you are wrong, whether you, whether you accept it or not, or will either uh, exonerate you if you are right according to the demand of the Lord. The conscience of man is God's instinct, God's instinct in us, which approves or condemns our actions, our thoughts and uh, deeds. Let me show you some people who are condemned by their, uh, by their own conscience. And without anybody judging them, actually, immediately their conscience judged them and they accepted their guilt and uh, they, just, uh, they just saw themselves just as they were. John chapter 8. Open your Bible. John chapter 8. I'm going to read from verse, uh, from verse uh, 2. John chapter 8. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought up unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such be stoned. But what sayest thou? These they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he had them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which had it, being convicted by their own word, conscience, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the elders, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. I stopped there. All I wanted to see there is what conscience does in the life of every human being. He either justifies your, your actions or condemns it. There's no way you can uh, completely silence your conscience. Do you know? Human conscience was awakened or became active at the fall by man when he decided to eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Before man fell on the Garden of Eden, Man was created in perfect holiness. He was totally innocent. He didn't have the knowledge of uh, uh, evil or and good. He is just doing good all the time. It was when he disobeyed the commandment of God, and disobedience brought sin, and sin brought judgment, that now God put in man conscience. His conscience now was awakened. To be able to see himself. And you know, in Genesis chapter 3, immediately the woman ate the fruit. She saw her nakedness, condemned. She gave to her husband. He also ate and saw his nakedness, condemned. And the two of them ran and hid themselves. God began to call them. They could not answer why their conscience has condemned them. And they, right from that time till now, and until we enter eternity, conscience will continue to either uh, tell you you are okay or you are wrong. Conscience ever since has been the guiding faculty in the moral acts of man. The Bible has much to say about the different types of conscience. 
Let me take you through some Bible passages to show you different types of conscience, as you can see in the scriptures. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2, the Bible talks of a conscience of sins. That is, a conscience that is just filled with sin. A conscience that is sold to sin, sold to iniquity. Hebrews chapter 10, verse, uh, verse 2. For then will they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of uh, sins. Somebody can be so full of sin in his or her conscience, to the point that he felt that, well, there's nothing wrong in it, but whether he accepts it or not, one may exonerate himself or herself, but before God, every sinner will be condemned and judged. Let's look at another one. In Titus, in Titus chapter 1, Titus chapter 1, in verse 15, Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is what? Defiled. You see, when somebody begins to just do anything he likes, he can be carrying all everywhere a kind of defiled conscience. A conscience that is, is filled with all sorts of evil, a bad character, bad behavior, and all things here and there contrary to the word of God. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 2, we are told of another type of conscience. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Let me read from verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devils. Verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's talking of somebody who has graduated from backsliding to apostasy. And therefore, his conscience is completely sealed up against the truth, against the scripture, against the word of God. And that man is just going his own way. The end of that man will be perdition in the lake of fire in eternity. I show you another type of conscience in First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, in verse 16. First Peter chapter 3, in verse 16. Having a good what? A good conscience. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evil doers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your conversation in Christ. That's a positive one. A good conscience. And every truly born again child of God. I use the word truly because there are many false born again so-called Christians around us today. There are so many people that profess to know God but in works they deny him but and in, and, and, and in all good works they are just reprobate and they are abominable reprobate in all things so but we are told somebody can have a good conscience after you are born again and you are converted and you do all your restitutions and anything wherein your heart is condemning you immediately you take step to settle everything to settle every account and straighten your life and straighten your way by faith and by the grace of god then you have a conscience that is good no more condemnation in Acts chapter 24, verse 16, I've read that. What Paul, the, the declaration of Paul there talks of a pure conscience. A pure conscience is a conscience that is every time always having a conscience void of what? Void of offense. No guilt. No condemnation. Nothing, nothing that, not, nothing inside that condemns your action. You are doing everything according to the word of God. I've talked about conscience in the introduction. How about the new life? The reality of the new life is for you to have a good and pure conscience, free from guilt or condemnations. To have a clear conscience, therefore, that will necessitate looking back at our past lives of sin and taking positive, honest, humble steps to correct whatever has been wrong. Because until this is done, my brothers and sisters, Brethren in the Lord, until it's done, whoever you are. In obedience to the word of God, to the light of the scripture, 
the reality of the new life in Christ will remain darkened to people who might have, whom you might have offended or in whose presence you have done some evils. What am I saying? If somebody say, I've repented, I am now a child of God, praise the Lord, I am this, I am that. But he has not taken step to amend his wrong ways, to return back stolen goods, to correct all the lies he has spoken, or, 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 where, or go to uh, or settle whatever uh, conflict with uh, another co lecturer or a co staff in the same uh, department or another fellow in the place where you are residing in the quarters. There, uh, if such a, such a person say, I'm not a child of God, your neighbor will look at you, your co staff will look at you, your co lecturer will look at you and say, It's not serious. If truly he is serious, he borrowed money from me, he used bold face, he has not paid, and he says he's a Christian. Is that Christianity? Your, your neighbor, whom you maybe you quarrel with him over a simple thing, and you maybe you curse one another, and that man is terribly offended. And maybe from that time onward, you have been keeping malice, no exchange of greetings anymore. Go your way, I go my way. If you say now, I am born again, I am a child of God, I have repented before the Lord, what follows is that you will go back and restore and do what is right and settle with that person. Otherwise, your testimony whatever testimony you say you have will not be easily believed by those who knew the scriptures by those who knew the standard of the world so this subject we are considering is very very important it is very central to your christian living and particularly if you have just given your life to the lord or maybe you did it one year ago but there are matters that are still pending and every time you hear it either on a mini message or in a cassette, or you read something like that in the Bible, your, your conscience prick you, and it appears there is a check, there is a reminder that when are you going to settle this thing? That is what we are considering today. So that all, all sense of guilt, all the things in where your conscience has been correct, uh, uh, inflicting upon you and uh, pricking you here and there, you can get rid of them and you can live a, a, life, of, uh, a life of a Christian void of offense toward god and toward men i'm going to talk on three points number one necessity of having clear conscience necessity of having clear conscience nobody should say well uh, yeah, maybe it's not it's not it's not important it is very very necessary because without it you cannot completely say you have repented because clear conscience or straighten our past life actually is an integral part of a genuine biblical repentance and uh, salvation. Because if you say I'm born again, you are not willing to do restitution, nobody will believe what you are saying. Point two, we are going to see the reality of the new life uh, in new creatures. After we have done our restitution, and we remove all the blockade that are haunting us every time, it is then our new life in Christ becomes very clear. And people will now see us, and they will give glory to God. They will, they, they will give glory to our Father who is in heaven, because by the time you pay your debt, by the time you correct whatever needs to be corrected in your life, and there is no more condemnation in your heart, and your conscience bears you witness every time that your, your conscience is free and clear, it is then people will begin to behold Christ in your life. And I'm praying that the Lord will help us. That whatever has been a kind of, a, a kind of a condemnation within our heart, whatever has been causing us a kind of embarrassment within us, and it's making us many times to feel as if uh, I don't know whether, whether I'm really born again. I pray that today the Lord will give us the grace and the willingness to remove them and to do whatever is right in Jesus' name. And point three, we are going to look at obedience and faith. You see, what we are teaching here tonight requires those two things. You have to obey God and you have to have faith in God. You need not fear to do, to do it, to straighten your life. You need not begin to say, well, I'm saying I do it and I'm in trouble. Even if you enter into any trouble, the Lord who has commanded you is able and abundantly able to deliver you. Is God able? I say, is God able? Of course, he's able to deliver those who trust in him. Now, let's look at the points one by one. In 1 Timothy chapter 5 again, 1 Timothy chapter 5, I'm looking at five, verses 5 and 6. 1 Timothy chapter 5, 
chapter 1, sorry. Chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith on faith. That verse is telling us how necessary, how important for you, for you and for every one of us who are, uh, who are named the name of Christ to have a good, a pure heart and a good conscience so that we will be able to live our life. In verse 6, from which some have sweared, have turned aside unto vain jangling. Verse 6 is like a caution or like a warning that those who say, well, it is not necessary. I don't need to go, I, need, I don't need to go thus far. You will make a shipwreck of your faith and you are going to swerve away from the narrow road and you are going to enter into greater trouble. Why? Because after conversion or the new bad, the new bad experience, the conscience under the control of the indwelling spirit in you because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 16, it said, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of uh, who? Oh, they are the children of God. Then it said in verse uh, 14 of the same Romans chapter, uh, chapter, 8, uh, ch uh, chapter, uh, chapter 8, it says in verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In verse 16, the Spirit is a bearer witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That is, at the new birth, the Holy Spirit convicts you of your sin and lead you to confession and then resulting in conversion. Now that's Holy Spirit within you. After you, are now, after you have confessed your sins to God and you tell God, I will not do it again, that same Spirit of God will now awaken you from your slumber to remind you all that you have done. This is done in conjunction, of course, with your conscience. That's what I'm, I want you to note there. After conversion of the new birth experience, the conscience under the control of the indwelling spirit become awakened and much more active. Are you following me? I say, are you following me? Your conscience becomes much more active than before. You know, when somebody is sold to sin, Soul to immorality, soul to drunkenness, soul to a wayward life, soul to a kind of a, a kind of a, a kind of a, a, a secret cult or cultism. It's like if that person has no conscience again, even though the conscience appears to be weakened and not active, but that conscience is still there. And so he just go on without any. He doesn't bother at all about it. He felt well. Everybody is doing it. I'm not the only person that is wrong. That's the life of the unconverted, the unregenerated, the one that is yet to know the truth that can set him or her free. But immediately, the light of the word of God dawns on you and, and remove the darkness away and make you to see who you are. And then you confess and become a child of God. Now your conscience becomes much more awakened and much more active now to remind you the past life that needs to be straightened reminds you of some deeds you need to correct, reminds you of some, of some deliberate uh, things you did to justify yourself even though you know you are wrong. And the Holy Spirit, in conjunction with your conscience, will, will remind you and make you to see that there is need to go back home and settle with this one or that one. There will be a remembrance of things done wrong prior to our conversion, prior to our repentance before God. Because when we sin, it is not only the person we have uh, injured that we have sinned against. By injuring our neighbor or, or telling lies against him or bear false witness against him, we have not only injured that person, we have also broken the commandment of God. The commandment of God says, thou shalt not bear false uh, witness. Where you have stolen, the word of God says, thou shalt not uh, steal. So if you have stolen, or you have embezzled, or you have done something that is wrong, it is not only God you have sinned against by breaking his law or breaking his commandment, you have also, in an, on, on the other hand, offended your neighbor, whose uh, property you have uh, confiscated, or who are with whom you are keeping malice or wanting or the other, because if you hate your brother, the Bible says you are a murderer. So anything, anything we commit is two ways, against God and against our fellow men. And that's the reason why, after we are convicted and we know that we have sinned and we know there's no more argument, we acknowledge our sins before the Lord and we say, God, I am sorry, I won't do it again. Forgive me, wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ. Of course, God will answer. 
But at the same time, the Holy Spirit of God inside you now, the one that made you to, to, uh, to yield to the word of God you had, and the conscience, of course, but, uh, but we, we now work in you again to make you to see those things that you need to put right. There will be a remembrance of evils we have done in unrighteousness, such as maybe we're uh, cheating or extortioning money unjustly, either from a co-worker or from a student or from another friend or a relation or somebody else or maybe embezzlement you know when somebody is not born again he's blind to all these things and he feels that uh, he's so smart to make money in an unjust manner but after you say i repented i forgive you i've told god I'm not, I'm not going to do that again the one you have done if you are going to have a clear conscience before god and before men you have to make sure you restore back you first of all confess it and then you take step to pay it back until then your conscience will keep on waking you up every day what about this money you embezzle what are you going to do about it in fact you yourself will you just discover that you are not free even though you say you are born again, you are not free within you. Within your heart, you are like a slave. It is until you do it, it is then you, come, you become uh, free. Injustice, or maybe you have done injustice to somebody in the discharge of your official duty. You know, we hear of uh, lecturers deliberately failing somebody. Uh, for uh, failing somebody because he didn't do one thing or the other, maybe he didn't buy the, the handout, or maybe he didn't give you, he didn't give you opportunity. But that's, that's before you are converted. He didn't allow you to touch her as a woman, and therefore you say you you will never make it in the, my own paper. You will never pass my course, and you mean it. No matter what that uh, that lady may write, you deliberately fail her. And you tell the other one, well, you didn't buy the handout. Everybody bought it, you didn't buy. No matter what you, even if you got everything, I will mark it wrong because you are the only stubborn one among them. And all that is injustice. It's like extortioning money in an unrighteous way. Or maybe we, are, we, we have unpaid debts. Uh, debts you owe and you refuse to pay. And you deliberately say, if you ask me again, I will deal with you. And the person, because he's afraid of you. Maybe he knows that uh, he knows who you are, that you can do many things in an evil way before you are converted. Therefore, the person now kept quiet. Now that you say, I am born again, if you all give your life to the Lord and you don't want to go to hell again, now that debt legitimately you owe it, you go back and settle. That's why until you do that, there is no right conscience within you. Your conscience will not be clear. In the, and we see the issue of restitution. Another word for clear conscience is restitution, restoring back where we need to restore either things we have taken or things we have done wrongly, deliberately. Or in all these areas, even in marriage, if somebody marries somebody else's wife and the woman that is in your house now is not your real wife, you, you just uh, seduce her from her husband and then she became your wife. Or maybe you also, you marry somebody as a husband. The person you are living with now is not your real husband because you, you divorced your own husband some, some years ago and you told lie to, the, to this new man that uh, you have never married in your life. He's the first man you ever met. And you know, God knows you are lying. Now that if you say I'm a Christian, oh, thank God I've given my life to the Lord, all those sins will come back again because the conscience will prick you. The Spirit of God within you will remind you. And until you do it, there is no way you can escape from that condemnation from time to time. Let's look at the book of Leviticus, talking to us on the need to do restitution so as to have a clear conscience and demonstrate the reality of the new life that we have in Christ Jesus. Leviticus is in the Old Testament. I'm looking at uh, chapter 6. Leviticus chapter 6. I'm going to read from verse 1. Please open your Bible along and read as I read here. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a man sin and commit a trespass against the Lord, and lie, tell lie, unto his neighbor, in that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, he took it by violence, or had deceived his neighbor, or have found that which was lost, and lied concerning it, and sweared falsely, false declaration of age, false declaration of marriage, 
telling lies about the number of children you have because of education allowance, student allowance. He said, you swear it falsely. In any of all this that a man doeth, sinning therein, that is, all these uh, activities, all these actions and deeds amounts to sinning. It is wrong. In verse 4, then it shall be. Because he has sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he had deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found. Or all that about which he has sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principal, and shall add the fifth part more thereto, and give it unto him to whom it appertained in the day of his uh, trespass offering. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the floor, with thy, with, uh, with thy estimation, for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, and he shall be forgiven for anything of all that he had done in trespassing therein. We can see here very clearly what God told the children of Israel in the wilderness. As a guiding law and principle in their relationships with one another, it is still binding today because God is a God of righteousness and He will never condone unrighteousness for anybody, no matter your caliber, no matter your position. Whatever is wrong in the sight of God, you can never turn it to be right, no matter who you are. Whatever is wrong is wrong according to the word of God. And God, if God says you have to do restitution, you have to pay back. You have to correct the lies you have told. You have to correct the wrong, uh, the, the false affidavit you have made. You don't argue about it because if you argue, you cannot have a clear conscience. You won't be, your conscience will never, never justify you. Every time you'll be reminded of these things. In Ezekiel chapter 33, Ezekiel, prophet Ezekiel's uh, a book, Ezekiel chapter 33, I'm going to read from verse 14 again. Ezekiel chapter 33, from verse 14. We're looking at the uh, scriptures confirming the fact that there is need for us to do restitution so that we can have a clear conscience. Ezekiel chapter 33 from verse 14. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If it turn from his sin and do that which is lawful, uh, if, it, uh, if it turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, Give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not uh, die. You see, the interpretation is very clear there that see, God has declared the soul that sinned, he shall die. Whoever is a wicked man, whoever is uh, keeping malice or doing evil, he will die in his iniquity except he repents and turns away. But he said, after he has repented from his evil way, he doesn't stop there. He will restore back all the pledges he has made with another person. Give again that which he has robbed from his employer or his company or from another fellow man or woman. He should walk in the status of life. It is only then he can live. And we see the practical demonstration in the life of somebody who became converted in the New Testament. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. I'm looking at uh, one man there who gave his life to the Lord. Everybody was uh, surprised that this man could ever turn to God. And immediately he was saying, I am ready to do whatever is right so as to make sure that my conscience is totally clear from every guilt. Luke chapter 19. I'm going to read from verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. For Jesus to go to the house of Zacchaeus, I can tell you Zacchaeus already on the way to forgiveness and salvation. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become what? The sons of God. In verse 7, and when they saw it, that is the people, they all murmured saying, that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything, anything material, anything whatever, from any man by false accusation, I restore him how many times? 
fourfold. This man was saying, I know my life has been wrong because he was a custom officer, a custom guru. And you know people in that kind of thing, except they are genuinely converted, they, they know how to embezzle money, they know how to make money in a bloody way. And so such was Zacchaeus. His life has been ruined by ill-gotten wealth, ill-gotten gains. But now he met Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the only savior from sin. And Jesus went to his house and right away there, receiving Jesus Christ joyfully, surrendering his life unto him, he now said, Lord, I am now ready. Anything I've done wrong, anything wherein I've, I've cheated anybody, I am prepared to, to restore it back uh, fourfold. So here we see the lesson, the teaching on restitution that is telling us that we need to make our ways right before God and before men. Otherwise, they won't believe your testimony. Let me show you another man in the Old Testament whom God told that he need to immediately restore back another man's wife. Otherwise, he is dead. You see, when somebody is in adultery, either marrying a wrong, uh, wrongly or doing something that is uh, not according to the will of God, such a person will be under the judgment of God until he or she actually repents and do restitution where necessary. I'm, written, I'm looking at Genesis chapter 20 very quickly. Genesis chapter 20 in verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Why? For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's uh, wife. But Amalek had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister, and she, even she herself said, he is my brother, in the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, have I done this? Verse 6, and God said unto him in a dream, yea, I know that thou didst this, thou this, this, in the integrity of the heart, for I also will hold thee from sinning against me, therefore suffered I did not to touch her. Now, therefore, verse 7, now, therefore, what is Abimelech to do? Restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, no doubt that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are dying. Can you see the, the seriousness, the very necessity of doing restitution? Because if you fail to do it, return back a uh, stolen good or stolen property, return back the woman who is not your legitimate, uh, your, your legitimate wife, rest, uh, 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 pack away from the man who is not your legitimate uh, husband, go back, go, go back to your own uh, rightful husband, or uh, go back and now pray and know the will of God and marry uh, rightly. If you have not married before, but the man was a die for sin, you marry her like that. So if you don't do it, until you do it, you are a dead man spiritually. You may be walking all about and singing and praising God. But as far as God, as, as far as God is concerned, when we have bought iniquity in our heart and we refuse to make our ways right before the Lord, we are just a walking skeleton, dead but, but, but alive. So I pray the Lord will grant us the grace to make sure that we will not play with our eternal life in Jesus' name. Refusal or neglect to clear our consciences will result in continuous condemnation or a feeling of guilt continuously. Each time we are reminded either through hearing of a message and teaching on that, on that subject or, or, having a, or when somebody now, a cancer, maybe you go for counseling and the person says, yes, uh, this is what should be done, this is what should be done, you will be feeling guilty. The question is, how long? Do you want to carry this guilt about? How long do you want to be hiding? How long will you continue to argue with the word of God? Don't you, see, don't you know that every day your conscience is kicking you and pricking you and telling you this is not the way, this is not the new life. The new life is a life free from all types of condemnation. And I pray that tonight every guilt in our heart, every in any way we are being condemned by our conscience and by the spirit of God within us, we are going to make amend in Jesus' name. Let's quickly go to point two, reality of the new life in the new creature. You see, when we say we are born again, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ Jesus, is what? It's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become uh, new. That is, once we say we are born again, the Lord expects us to be totally new, brand new person. That means that whatever can, can return us back to Egypt, we will take it away from our life. Whatever can make us to remember again those evil things, we will make sure we deal with it 
quickly. That's why if you belong to a club that is sinful, a club that is uh, socially sinful, or you belong to a secret call somewhere, and you have been doing some things in darkness, and now you see I'm a child of God, you will come out from those things. Not only that, all the regalia of secret court, all the books of, uh, of uh, false doctrine, all the charms of the, of the evil people, whatever they have given you for so-called power, you will gather them together and set them on fire or close your eyes and throw it into the, into the wild bush so that the remembrance will be totally taken away because out of sight is out of uh, mind. But if you keep them there and you are still looking at them, someday you are likely going to go back. But if you burn the breed behind you, and you set them on fire. All those uh, uh, Rosicrucian books, all those canker uh, books, all those uh, books of uh, that tells you uh, lies about, uh, tells you lies and not tell you the, the real truth. All those uh, horoscope uh, books, all those uh, star guessing uh, materials, and all those horoscope materials, you bundle them together and set them on fire. You don't say, Well, I'm a child of God, I will never touch it again. No, the fire that is in your house. Or in your bookshelf, or in your cupboard, or you had it somewhere. It means that you are not, you have not burned the bridge behind you. So, but the new life says you must be totally new, without any fault in your life. In Ephesians chapter two, Ephesians chapter two, in verse ten, Ephesians chapter two, verse ten. There we are told, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. We are, to be, we are created by God now. Newly created. Newly set apart. Newly regenerated. And therefore, anything that can defile our garment, we turn away from it and we throw it aside. In chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4. From verse 1, I therefore the priest now, the Lord beseech you that he walk worthy of the vocation wherewith he are called, with lowliness and meekness and long suffering, for bearing one another in love. That's saying that the old life is past, the new has come to, uh, has come to stay, and therefore we live a life, we walk worthy of the calling. Of the, uh, of, of the grace of God which you have received now and we walk in the newness of life entirely and it's in, in its entirety. In, this, uh, in, that, in that same chapter 4 of Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 17, it says there, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other gents walk in the vanity of their minds. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lascivious and to walk all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned uh, Christ. When you come to Christ and your life is changed, everything within you must be changed completely. You pull out from a bad company, you pull out from sinful companion, you pull out from sinful club, you pull out from sickle court, you pull out from anything that can make you to, that can bring a kind of guilty into your heart or into your conscience you pull out from it and set your life totally right in verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and you put on on the new man which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness in verse 28 let him that stole steal no more but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needed let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God wherein you are sealed unto the day of uh, redemption. New creatures must live a new life. New creatures must do everything in the newness of life. After we have cleared our conscience from guilt that we have, then, then we continue to live and enjoy the new life in Christ Jesus. Until you clear your, your restitution, you will enjoy the new life. But after you have cleared it, you now take your stand. That from now on, all those uh, frivolous life, all those dubious life, all those uh, extortioning kind of type of life, all those uh, bad characters and bad behavior to people will come to an end permanently. The reality of the new life is that of honesty. Honesty. Anywhere you are in your in your in your in your in your calling in your profession as the academic, the people in the citadel of knowledge, honesty will characterize your way. If you are working as a, a non-academic staff in the dean's office, in the registrar's office, or you are working in the laboratory, or you are in the health center, wherever you find yourself there, honesty will be your watchword. Sincerity of life. That people will be able to to see you as a man of God really. By your word, they know that when you say something, they can rely on it. 
When you tell them yes, it is yes. And when you say no, it is no. It is you tell the truth all the time. That is the reality of the new life. After you have done all your restitution, if you have taken money in an unjust manner, you have returned. And you have said to the Lord that the next thing is that to live a radiant life, a beautiful life. That will be a challenge to other people. That your co-lecturers, your co-dean or co-professor, uh, they will look at you and say, ah, ah, it appears that uh, the whole thing is really wonderful. We can't really understand the secret of this. All the things we have been doing together, you are no longer doing it. You say, yes, the old has passed. Behold, the new has uh, come. I pray the Lord will help us. So live in the reality of the new life in Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. New creatures must necessarily live daily without any guilt or condemnation within, within your heart. Every day of your life, you examine yourself. You examine your heart, you examine your conscience, and know that there is nothing uh, incriminating there. This new life will usher in peace. You see, when you begin to live this new life, you have peace of heart and peace of mind. You will, you will have rest for your soul. You know, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When, when he said, come and learn from me, and uh, you, if, I, if I am meek and lowly, and you shall find rest for your soul. When you want rest from all the trouble here and there, from all the hula baloo of uh, uh, campus life and all that kind of thing that doesn't give real joy, only, only temporary joy, you make sure that you live a balanced Christian life. You live a challenging Christian life, which nobody can fault. Nobody can point an accusing finger on top. Even if they are going to persecute you because of that, yes, you will saw that persecution for Christ's sake, and you still hold your stand, like we had in the morning. Daniel was ready for anything. He was, he was courageous. He was courteous. He, was, he has confidence in God, and he boldly stood for the right. And I'm believing God. After this program, we shall stand for the truth. I didn't hear your email very loud. I say we shall stand for the truth. We shall stand for righteousness. We shall stand for those things that are godly in the name of Jesus Christ. This new law will usher in peace, contentment, freedom from guilt, having a clear or good conscience at all times. This is the beauty. The beauty and the reality of the new life in Christ. We must daily therefore balance up our spiritual account. What did I say? Balance up your spiritual account on daily daily basis every time examine yourself and see whether there's anything to settle you quickly settle because the issue of having clear conscience is not just on a once and for all basis every day of your life if there is any offense anywhere you clear it if there is any uh, kind of uh, misunderstanding from any quarter you clear it if anybody come and tell you this and oh i am very sorry i didn't mean it like that please forgive me and you clear the way where there's need to apologize you apologize quickly a christian have no time for argument a real new creature has no time to disagree with anybody and then begin to quarrel and fight because of a uh, paper, because of a uh, promotion, because of uh, money, because of this or because of that. Because all these things we see in the world, they will pass away. I say they will pass away. All that money can buy, all that education can give you, without Christ, without the new life in Christ, is a waste. Because when you die, your certificate will not follow you. Your degree causes uh, your degree cannot follow you. Anything you have, anything you use your money for will be left here and then you go. And when you get there, you'll be asked the question to come and give your account. I pray, Lord, that our accounts will be clear in Jesus' name. Don't allow your sin to follow you to, to, to judgment. You send it before. When you repent of your sins, your sins are remitted before you, be, before you get there. Therefore, Jesus will have cleared it and therefore you are declared not guilty. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's go to the last point, obedience and faith. This is where we need to, to now humble ourselves. You have seen yourself in the word of God. Wherein you need to do restitution. Wherein your heart has been condemning you. Maybe, where, maybe you have been arguing about it and say, well, uh, this one is too difficult. This one is too hard. I am telling you, even if you suffer in a little way, to make your way right before God and to remove the guilt in your conscience and to stop and to put an end to the harassment of your conscience. I am telling you, things will work out for you in Jesus' name. In John chapter, uh, John chapter 13, in verse 17, Jesus says something there. After he has shown the disciples how they ought to love one another and wash one another's uh, feet, teaching them the, uh, the lesson of humility, he now told them, he said, if ye know these things, Happy are ye, what happened if you do that? If you know this thing, how to have a clear conscience, 
and live a radiant, beautiful new life, it will be wonderful as you do it. Happy are ye if you do them. When we obey the word of God and by faith yield to the demand of the scriptures, we receive uh, blessings. When restitutions are made and past wrongs are settled, the peace of God flows the heart. That's the, that's the benefit. Immediately you settle all those uh, things that are worrying you and uh, afflicting your heart and making your conscience not to give you rest, you discover there is rest within. And uh, not only that, the gate of God will be open. The peace of God will come into your heart and you now have rest of mind. Not only that, there will be confidence toward God. Spiritual growth and progress will begin from there. Many are not making progress in their Christian life because they are uh, unclear their debts. There are unclear things they need to clear. There are many, many contours, many hindrances, many blockades on their spiritual life waiting to be cleared, waiting to be, made, waiting to be removed, waiting to be, to be dealt with. And God will not do it for you. You are to do it. That's why you need obedience and faith. And if you have faith in God, it shall be possible in Jesus' name. When guilt is removed from our heart and the conscience, the conscience will become clear. When, the, when guilt is removed, all the, all the guilty conscience are gone. You have a clear conscience toward God and toward men. In Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah told the people, after he has told them their sin and their backsliding, he now tells them something. Isaiah chapter 1, from verse 18, he says, Come now, let us reason together. Say the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, read the last sentence there. Ye shall eat the good of the land. Perhaps many things have been delayed in heavenly places because of your disobedience to do to make your way clear. Perhaps some, some answer to prayer have been withheld because you are still saying, hey, I don't agree with this one. The moment you agree and you pray through here and you get back home and you settle, you get back home, you restore, you get back home, you correct, you get back home, you reconcile, you get back home and you call your wife, all these things you have done and I say I will never forgive you from today I forgive from my heart. I will never mention it. I will never recall it again. And you settle completely. Maybe you, are, you have offended your husband. And your husband offended you rather. And you are saying, I will never forgive you. I will till we die. We will carry to heaven. My, my sister, don't do that. If you, if you say you will carry offense to heaven, you will never get to heaven. Nobody carry offense to heaven. All those who carry offense, they will carry to hell. But why should you go to hell after knowing the truth? So you will settle here with God and then you take a decision that when I get back home, the first thing to do is to call my husband and tell him, I am sorry for everything. I've forgiven you now. I, I forget whatever, whatever has happened. Whatever you have done for me, I've, I've totally erased everything in my heart. From this moment onward, we shall be one. I'm telling you, peace will reign in your heart. Joy will flock your, uh, your, your mind. And the, and the glory of the Lord shall begin to overshadow you. Don't you like something like that? For God to look at you and say, yes, now you are beautiful. Now you are all right. Now my blessing will come. Now my, my, goodness, and, uh, my goodness and mercy shall, shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord uh, forever. My brethren, in First John, before we pray, First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. I'm looking at verse 19 there. From, we are going to read down. 1 John chapter 3 from verse 19. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our hearts condemn us, look at verse 20 very well. For if our hearts condemn us, what happens? God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. This evening, if your heart is condemning you, settle with God. If you are carrying condemnation about, settle with God. Because if whatever, if wherein your heart is condemning you, be sure God knows everything. And he cannot exonerate you until you set. But I believe God for something. As many as he say, oh God, I surrender. I believe your word, I'm going to do it. I am sure today there will be a new beginning. I said there will be a new beginning. There will be a new beginning because when you obey God, that is a new beginning. When you, when, you, when you settle your life before God, it's a new beginning. When you walk in the way of the Lord, it's a new beginning. When you trust the Lord to help you to do your institution and you, are, and you determine to do it, it's a new beginning. And I'm praying today as you enter into this new beginning, God himself will see you through in Jesus' name. Don't be afraid. Fear not. The Lord is going to help you. Shall we rise up to pray?
I want you to tell the Lord, wherever you are carrying guilt, wherever you are being condemned, wherever your conscience is uh, uh, pricking you and you are not settled, why not tell the Lord, I surrender? Why not tell the Lord, I am sorry? Why not tell the Lord, I will go back now and settle my life? If you have forced, if you have forged any document, if you have embezzled any money, if you have cheated anybody, if you have been extortioning money from students, if you have been doing wickedly to call to students and you have been telling them this and that and you know it's wrong, why don't say tell the Lord, I am sorry for all those injustices. I am sorry for all those errors. I'm sorry for all those wicked things I've done. Oh God, have mercy on me. If I leave this place, oh God, I am going to settle everything. I'm going to do my decision. I'm going to have a clear conscience, word of to our God and to our men, if you take that decision, the Lord is going to do it for you. I want you to pray sincerely in your heart. This is a message for you to pray about. I want you to sincerely pray and ask God to help you. Your new life in Christ Jesus will not be seen by people where you have decisions to make and you don't do it. Where you need to correct and you don't correct it. Where you need to pay back, you don't pay back. Nobody will believe your testimony. But when you settle, when you settle your heart and you settle your life, everything will be new again. I want you to call upon the Lord. Let's be serious with our prayer. Let's really call upon the Lord. The Lord does not want us to go back with any guilty conscience, with any, any kind of condemnation uncleared. The Lord doesn't want us to continue in that, uh, in that kind of uh, hide-and-seek game anymore. Remember, God will not leave you alone until you have settled your, uh, your life. Until you have put right every wrong that you have, uh, you have committed. So tell the Lord, I am willing, I am ready. Remember his promise. If he be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. It's a new day when you do your restitution and you settle before the Lord and you settle before men. I want you to call upon the Lord and pray with all your heart. You need to take some decisions. Take it now. You need to tell God definite things you are going to do when you get back. Tell the Lord now. You need to tell the Lord what, some things you need to go back and confess. You tell the Lord, I am going to do it. And the Lord will help you through. God is a merciful God. We are, we repent and we call upon the Lord, He will forgive us and He will help us out. Our God is a mighty God. He forgives sins and He, and he, and he cancels our iniquity. We are to do the right. 